What I'd like people to realize is that if we don't restore these meadows, they won't fix themselves and they'll continue to degrade until one day it'll be so dry that the grasses will disappear and the forest will take over and we'll have lost this whole meadow ecosystem. Well, I think in the past, uh, you know, these meadows were really kind of abused because we didn't really understand, you know, the importance of the meadow or the function of the meadow or how easy it was to throw off the balance of these areas. We were much more concerned at that period in our history, you know, with uh, our survival and our expansion of our, you know, ability to live in these areas. With those changes, with the, with the occupation of the landscape uh, and, and, and the uses that, we've, that have occurred over time, some of these meadows have not been able to withstand that. When a stream channel becomes disconnected from the surface that it actually built, that has several effects. One, it dries out the meadow surface so that different vegetation can come in. Two, when it does disconnect, there tends to be a lot of stream bank erosion associated with it, which is a sediment source and can be a problem in a place like Lake Tahoe. And three, it may change the ecological resiliency of that meadow because that meadow is no longer as wet as it once was. We see this condition throughout the Sierra landscape. And so now that we've recognized it, and we recognize how important meadows are, we are now trying to go back in and reverse that damage. I think one of the most uh, shocking things about our project is when we're implementing is that we do bring in excavators, bulldozers, dump trucks, there's a lot of heavy equipment move, moving earth around these projects. But I like to think of it as if it's someone with a serious heart defect. You wouldn't give someone an aspirin to fix a heart valve problem. You need to go in, have open heart surgery, which is a very traumatic process. But in the end, the doctor does their job, closes them up and they heal and they go on with their lives. Meadow restoration is a lot like this. We go in, we tear the meadow open, we fix the problem, and then we close it up and we let it heal and move on. But one of the things that I found over and over again in our projects is that restoration works. It's always been kind of uh, amazing and, and uh, mind-boggling to me that we can go out and manipulate a few things in an area and within a few years natural processes come in and that area recovers and you can't even tell that we were ever there. Part of that I think is the lessons that we've learned as a restoration team but part of that is just how amazing and resilient these systems are. They really want to function correctly. They really want to be healthy and you just have to sometimes give them a little nudge and they will become the amazing areas that they're supposed to be. What makes this work so rewarding for me is that future generations can pull off the highway and come out here and instead of seeing this dried up dust bowl of a landscape, will be able to enjoy a natural meadow as it was hundreds of years ago before it was influenced by modern man and totally enjoy this gorgeous place. Meadow and stream restoration in particular is really important to the future of the Lake Tahoe Basin because Every stream in the Tahoe Basin feeds Lake Tahoe. The health of the lake 
is really tied to the health of the streams. And the lake is not going to be the healthy jewel of the Sierra that we want it to be without the streams and the meadows being healthy.